Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Nicole Kasperson, founder of WTF FinTech, WTF FinTech, to discuss how FinTech needs to change from within to truly keep its promise of financial inclusivity. Nicole, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. And how has FinTech company's role as a tool for financial inclusion evolved over the last couple of years? Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for having me. The pandemic completely changed the way consumers engage with their finances. In fact, research from Plaid shows that nearly 60% of fintech users say they can't live without using technology to manage their finances. So fintech has really moved from behind the scenes technology to center stage. That has resulted in more venture capital dollars in the sector than ever before. In 2021, global fintech funding jumped to a new record of $131.5 billion. And sure, that is cooling off a bit, but fintech is now touching industries outside of finance like healthcare. So we're really in the early innings of fintech living up to its true potential, to its hype. We're going to experience a ton of growth and platforms are going to also uh, evolve in the culture of inclusivity itself. Nicole, you often talk about fintech needing to change from within to truly keep its promise of financial inclusivity. Will you share more about that from that perspective? Absolutely. Fintech not only needs to create less expensive and more accessible tools for consumers, but it needs to be an inclusive industry in itself. By that, I mean creating equity in leadership roles. Fintech is an industry that combines two traditionally male-dominated fields, finance and technology. Both industries struggle with gender representation in the workforce due to things like degree gaps and retention gaps and workplace culture gaps. Women represent only 30% of fintech workforce, 12% of fintech founders are women, and women founders receive just 2% of venture capital. We have to change these type of figures in order to truly build innovative products that can resonate with diverse demographics of users. There is no innovation without the perspectives of more women and underrepresented groups in the room where decisions are made. Talk to us about how content creation plays a role in holding fintech accountable for being an equitable industry for women and people of color. Absolutely. I love this question. I fundamentally believe that media shapes the culture and perspectives of our world. I spent five years covering the finance and technology industries as a traditional reporter, only to find that women and underrepresented stories were not told enough. The United Nations recently shared that women's presence as new subjects in print, radio, and television has only increased 24% in 2015, from 17% in 1995, and only 9% of news stories evoke gender inequity issues, while just 4% challenge gender stereotypes. So these numbers are dismal, but irrespective of the imbalance, there is a fiercely active and tightly knit community of women and people of color working to change fintech for the better. You know, it's so interesting, Nicole, you had mentioned before that the pandemic really accelerated a number of these trends. And one thing that I noticed during the pandemic, even now, um, guests that come on financial media are certainly more diverse from uh, you know, a gender perspective and from multiple racial backgrounds. So that is a silver lining to the pandemic. Uh, so to wrap up here, tell us about WTF in tech and mm -hmm. what you've built here to address these issues. Absolutely. About six months ago, I launched What the FinTech or WTF in Tech. I love that folks have kind of taken on their own uh, spin on, on the branding. I love it. Have fun with what I've created here. But I created it with the fundamental belief that women in their creative input has historically not made it in B2B media. So What the FinTech is a place where I provide the industry with news analysis and I share the stories of diverse leaders in the space via my podcast, Humans of FinTech. But the content isn't about diversity itself. Instead, it covers the industry through the lens of a diverse perspective and focuses on fintech bringing equity to financial systems. We as an industry have to give women and other underrepresented groups opportunities to feel inspired by diverse leaders in the space. What the fintech builds in that culture of inclusivity, very specific to fintech leadership. And in the short time that I've been doing this, my bi-weekly newsletter has already crossed over 22,000 subscribers. I'm on the second season of my podcast, and I just hosted the inaugural event called Fintech is Femme, and it hosted over 130 fintech female operators and founders and leaders in the space at the Roxy Hotel in New York City. So I truly believe creating these cultures of uh, inclusivity and community are really some of the steps that we need to reach that next wave of innovation in fintech.
Yeah, I mean, that's remarkable growth that, that you just cited there. And that just shows you the demand that you have you know, within your audience. It's really great to hear, Nicole. Thank you for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.